Yes. So what you're doing is you're vetting your buyer to say, okay, we you, we know this, we feel this will appraise at 350, but we know you need to offer 375 to be competitive. Do you have that other 25 to handle that appraisal gap contingency, right. basically? Mm -hmm. But you're handling that all here. The seller doesn't have to worry about that. Absolutely. That's fantastic. And that's very different than, than the programs that I've seen in the past. Yeah. This is Davy's Doghouse. If you're a home seller or soon to be one, we'll throw you a bone. Hey everybody, Dave Foster here, Fontaine Family, the real estate leader. Today I'm bringing Davy's Doghouse down to Falmouth, Maine with Mike Rock from Harbor One Mortgage. And Mike is going to talk about a new program that they have that um, is great for buyers, but also can be great for sellers. And as you know, this podcast is sort of directed towards how to add value for sellers. And uh, so Mike, I'm going to just get right into it here. So we, we've talked in the past about the, um, more, um, the ability for buyers to bring to you an offer that's better than a conventional mortgage or certainly FHA or VA or whatever. So tell us about what your new program does. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, let's look at it from the seller's perspective. So what the program is called is Home Run. And what it allows us to do is remove the financing contingency. So from a seller's perspective, what does that mean? That means that they don't have to worry about at the 11th hour, someone losing a job or um, the finance, essentially the financing contingency falling through. Just okay. one more piece of red tape that is being removed. Okay, so it's called Home Run. Home Run. Okay, is the name and of the um, when you say contingencies, because not everybody yeah. speaks our language. Um, so if I'm getting a, a person coming in to buy my house, and they've got a contingency of getting a loan from a, from a mortgage company, I have to hope that they get that loan to go through by the closing date. Is that correct? That's exactly So correct. what do you do to make that go away? Sure, absolutely. So a lot of our work is done on the upfront. So mm -hmm. what we do for the, the buyers is we actually get them pre-underwritten. We get them pre-approved and pre-underwritten. So we get them in front of an underwriter first. So we make sure they're, they're rock solid. And then based on that, we allow them to go out and essentially remove that contingency off of their uh, offers and contracts because it essentially allows us to know that A, they're rock solid and that B, in case something happens, there are unforeseen circumstances, someone loses a job, for example, we actually will step in and buy the property from the so seller. So you're guaranteeing to buy it at the price that they have on that purchase and sale agreement, not Absolutely. at a lower price. I know there are some agencies that do a guaranteed sale, but they're giving you a price that's lower than you would want to take as a seller. That's not the same thing. No, no. So a buyer puts in an offer in a normal mortgage situation, yep. they then go through the um, mortgage uh, process where you get more of the information that you need from them, tax documents, things like that, to prove they actually can afford to buy the home. Absolutely, yep. And the underwriter is the last part of that, right? You send that package to the underwriter and they make sure that it, it's actually gonna be able to be funded. So yep. what you just said is that the, you're gonna get the underwriter involved first before they go out on the market to make their, uh, to go look at homes and make an offer. Exactly, in a traditional scenario, that's actually reverse. So traditionally yeah. we get some a bar pre-approved uh, and then they place an offer, they go into contract and then we get them in front of an underwriter. Right. So this just expedites that process. So A, we can move faster and B, we know they're solid, the seller knows they're solid. So okay. that they know that that offer is rock solid. Right, okay, so from the seller's perspective, and I know I'm kind of yeah. making, dumbing this down a little bit, but a lot of times people who haven't been in the market don't understand the financing part of it. Uh, it's all new to them. But the bottom line to the seller is that they're gonna have on one of these offers, basically a cash offer. Mm -hmm. Because not only has the, uh, the buyer gone through the process of vetting themselves so they, can, they know that they can buy the home at the price they're offering, but the, um, your, your uh, funders, your lenders are gonna actually guarantee to buy the home if something comes up at the end. Like I go out and buy a Maserati two days before closing. Exactly. Now my debt to income ratio is all thrown off. Exactly. You're, you're promising the seller that, you know, we're going to buy it anyway. Yep. We'll work with Dave to send the Maserati back to the <laughs> owner, <laughs> yeah. right? And yeah. then Dave will take his car back. He'll be back to his uh, credit debt to income ratio that makes sense. And we'll work with him to get our loan done. But you as a seller are going to get your money. Exactly. It's 100% correct. And, mm -hmm. you know, specifically in price ranges that are very competitive. Let's yeah. just pick on the $300,000 price range, which yeah. is very competitive right now. If you put an, a house on the market for $300,000, you know, you should get a lot of offers. You yeah. most likely get a lot of offers. Yeah. And what this does is it's going to elevate that offer above all of the finance offers because it just removes one layer of contingency. Right. It makes it that much uh, easier to close that deal. Right. And as a listing professional, I'm used to seeing the offers come in and I work yeah. with my... Um, 
sellers to understand what the better parts of each offer are. I don't make decisions for them, they make decisions, but I like, I'm there to help them understand what the offer says. So if we've got a uh, home run offer from you guys, I can tell my sellers this is uh, guaranteed to close. This will you close. Know? Yeah, because if the seller, something happens to the buyer, the uh, mortgage company will buy the home. Absolutely. And so that's as good as cash to my sellers. Yeah, absolutely. Right, absolutely. because we know we take the cash offers and we put them over here. Mm -hmm. They may not be the best price, so we may go back to a mortgage offer. But if we've got a mortgage offer at a great price and we know it's going to close, it's a win-win for the it's seller. A, it's a win-win. I mean, you can have a, a mortgage offer that's incredibly higher than everyone else, but if it doesn't close, it's just as good as nothing. Right, because an appraiser comes in. So let's yeah. talk about the appraisal process. <clears throat> yes. So the appraisal process is done really during the in the beginning phases, I guess I'll call mm -hmm. them. So what happens is, when the, this is now on the buy side. Um, this is not, you know, doesn't, the seller doesn't really see this part of it. So when you, as the buyer's agent, go to place an offer, what you do is you let us know. We put it into an uh, out of AVM, essentially an automated valuation management software. So we run like a desktop appraisal, essentially. So we'll know that it appraises for X. You don't, you, you're welcome to place the offer at X. You're welcome to play, place it higher or lower. If you want to go higher from a buyer's perspective, we just have to make sure you have those funds available. Mm -hmm. Because if, um, if the property does appraise, so we still have to do an appraisal yeah. because we're still getting funding. Right. Or we're still getting, getting a mortgage, but it's not contingent on it. So that's, that's a okay. huge piece. So they just have to, the sellers just need to be aware that that's happening, allow the appraiser in their home. Okay, but that's it for the seller. But that's that's it. different than before. That the, is different than the, before. In the, in the past, when you had these types of offers, they actually had to appraise. Yes. So what you're doing is you're vetting your buyer to say, okay, we, we know this, we feel this will appraise at 350, but we know you need to offer 375 to be competitive. Do you have that other 25 to handle that appraisal gap contingency, right. basically? Mm -hmm. But you're handling that all here. The seller doesn't have to worry about that. Absolutely. That's fantastic. And that's very different than, than the programs that I've seen in the past. Yeah, it is. And you know what's really cool about this program, too, is they don't have to use it. So mm -hmm. say, for some reason, the automated valuation management software comes in a little low, and they don't have $100,000, let us pick a random number. Mm -hmm. They don't have to use it. They can just place a regular finance offer, but yep. they're already fully underwritten. Yep. So from a seller's perspective, that's even better than it's typical. better than a, so we, they've already been in front of a underwriter. They know yeah. that they're that much closer to the closing table. Yeah. So for the sellers out there who haven't put their home on the market in the old days, you didn't necessarily need a pre-qual letter or pre-approval letter. Nowadays, um, offers that come in without those typically get put aside because they don't have any proof that the buyer has been vetted by anyone. Yeah. But most of the time when you're getting a, um, an offer with a pre-approval letter or even a pre-qual letter, pre-qualification is basically a cursory look at the income and, and expenses of that buyer, that's still not as good as going through the underwriting process. Oh, no. So most of the offers that are still out there are coming with a pre-qual or pre-approval letter that hasn't gone through underwriting. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, so this, is, this sounds great, Mike. I mean, very exciting to be able to offer to buyers, obviously, but for someone like me who works with sellers most of the time, being able to tell the seller, if you get this kind of offer, that's great. And then for you sellers out there, being able to tell you guys, I can proactively as an agent talk to the buyer agents and say, here's this program, this might be something you want to look at. Yeah, right? absolutely. Because from a seller's perspective, I want the least amount of contingencies. I want to know that my house is going to close and sell because I'm moving somewhere. Right. Maybe I need those funds. Maybe I don't. But still, yeah. everyone wants those <laughs> that deal to close on the, the right day. Yeah, yeah, that's great. And um, just personally, I've been through a couple of uh, problems with mortgage companies in the past month where two of the homes I had under contract, they had to back out because of mortgage problems. Now, those people are now a month and a half to two months uh, still in their homes, paying taxes, paying mortgages. Um, not a good thing to have happen. Right. And again, that's what this kind of um, offer will take away. It alleviates all do. that. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, Mike, I really appreciate it. It's always good to see you. Always. Thank and, you. Uh, thanks for coming in the house. The Doghouse, Mike is my first uh, returning guest at the Doghouse. So if you like um, topics like this from a seller's perspective, click the uh, button in YouTube to subscribe and uh, you'll see me talking to other people about things that matter to sellers, and maybe you'll see Mike for a third time in the future. So, hope you all have a great day. Don't forget, today's the day. Don't dog it.